Hello and welcome back to Pickleball King. So today we are back in Hearts of Iron and as you can tell by the title, we are going to be doing Battalion only. Now, what does that mean? Well, just like the name implies, every single one of our divisions. So like for example, this infantry division, it's not gonna look like this. Our infantry division is gonna look a little bit something like this. That's right, every single division that we are gonna have is gonna have a whopping two combat width. So, I think we're gonna need to spam a lot of divisions. And not only that, we're also gonna do no support companies for our battalions. I think we might try doing some heavy tanks, like heavy tank battalions, infantry battalions. But, in the meanwhile, before war, we're just gonna be doing the usual setup. So, I'll see you guys in the Spanish Civil War. So the Spanish Civil War has just kicked off and we are allowed to send five divisions and so we are going to send five of our best boys. Alright, it looks like our divisions are basically divisions, excuse me, our battalions are basically ready to attack. So let's see how we do in an encirclement. We're winning. See, this proves the superiority of the battalion model. Divisions, they're just too big, they're too heavy, they're bu too bulky, they're not flexible enough. Meanwhile, a battalion of motorized, that's what you need. All you need is 1,000 men with 100 guns and 34 trucks. That's all you need. Look at that, we're already pushing the Mac. We're about to encircle the Spanish. We're about to wipe out this pocket. This truly proves the superiority of the battalion methodology. Look at that, the first combat is done, and look at that, we wiped out the encirclement, the battalion method, so flexible, not a single German soldier died. If we had divisions, I guarantee you there would have been casualties, but these battalions, they're better, they're more independent. Alright, it looks like we are engaging some Soviet forces over here, and it might look like it's not going too well. They have 323 defense, and our soft attack is 0.5, but... Just you wait until the battalion tactics kick in, then it's all gonna come together. It looks like the situation in Europe is not developing to our favor as Austria-Hungary just annexed all of Czechoslovakia. Thankfully, we can still do the demand Sudetenland, and I'm hoping that uh, fate of Czechoslovakia will be more like fate of Austria-Hungary, but I'm not betting on it, so I have a feeling we're gonna have a pretty bloody war with Hungary. Although, I have done the fascist influence on them, so I'm trying to see if I can turn them into a puppet. So I've tried making some arty divisions, but there is a slight issue with them. When I put them in and they engage, they instantly disengage, and I was like, I wonder why that is. I think that might be happening because artillery has zero organization and no percent of modifiers is going to add art any organization to artillery. In addition to our bad luck that's already been going on with Austria-Hungary, I think this is the first time in history I've actually seen Lithuania refuse memo. So as I've been preparing for a potential war with Austria-Hungary, um, it's come to my realization that it's a little bit hard to manage all of these battalions. Um, I sort of feel like I'm the AI with all of these generals everywhere, and so what I've done is I've put all of the reserves just into just a general army, and I just have them garrisoning all of Germany. So yeah, this is what ge uh, Germany looks like. There are soldiers literally everywhere, so if anyone wants to do an advance, they will be shot at at every single part of the country. No part of the country is left undefended. Alright, I'm doing something I don't think I've ever done in the history of Hoi before, but I'm actually using spies to apply diplomatic pressure to Austria-Hungary and also improving relations with them so that hopefully I can invite them to the faction and then through my focus tree, hopefully I can just turn them into my puppet. That's the goal right now. Alright, perfect. We can actually invite Austria-Hungary to the faction and part of that is actually from that diplomatic pressure. Oh, look at this. This is fantastic news. Both Austria-Hungary and Romania have become our puppets. Oh, I love to see that. Alright, so the Soviets just finished their civil war, and Lithuania is no longer part of the Soviet faction. And in fact, there isn't a Soviet faction, so I think we're gonna go ahead and attempt to attack Lithuania. And hopefully the Soviets don't get called in, but even if they do, I think we might be able to do okay against them, just because they were just in a civil war, so all their troops are gonna be exhausted, and they're not gonna have a lot of supplies, so... Let's go ahead and uh, try this out. All right, the first engagement looks pretty good. We're losing some defenses, but we're winning on the offense, which is important. Yeah, I have to say, this war against Lithuania, now obviously I haven't committed too much. I've committed about two and a half armies, so in total, maybe about 60 battalions, which in division terms is probably not that much, um, but it's definitely been going a little rough. Like, we're winning, but we're taking more casualties, and this is taking longer than I would like. 
Obviously, you know, I'm sure if we flooded in everyone, things would go much better, but I'm just kind of seeing how it goes, and we definitely need lots and lots of Italians, which makes sense. Honestly, this sort of feels like the historical winter war that, you know, the Soviet Union had with Finland. We are just straight up being incompetent, and they are putting up a tough resistance. Like, how many are they at? Yeah, they've inflicted, yeah, twice as many casualties as we have to them. All right, the Lithuanians are finally about to collapse. This has taken way longer, and I was about to show casualties, but I think we were at 105,000 casualties. That is definitely worrying, but I'm sure it can only go better from here, right? Nations get weaker as the game progresses, right? I'm sure battalions will do better against, you know, better divisions. I think that's how it works. All right, the war has begun, and so far it's all green bubbles, so I can't complain. In fact, we're already making some pushes. We've taken Poznan pretty quickly. Can't complain about that. Um, now that the Allies are going to get involved, I think things are going to start to get a little bit dicey. And Iran and Iraq have joined the Axis, so we do have some Middle Eastern allies. All right, there we go. Poland has capitulated. Fantastic. And I think, yeah, we're only at 68,000 casualties with only 40,000 from Poland. So we're back on a more historical track. I think, Ozzy, we're doing a little bit worse than history, but I am not complaining. Now, if we can clean up France real quick, we'll be in a really good position. God, there's so many just battalions everywhere. It's so, oh my, they're just cluttering the screen and just, just down here. Oh, there's so much. It's so beautiful and so horrendous at the exact same time. All right, so unfortunately, uh, we're getting close to Christmas, and we have not really pushed through Belgium. This is turning... Uh, eerily similar to World War One. Maybe that was a mistake in World War One. They used just battalions instead of divisions. But the thing is, we're not losing, which means that we can still win. So that's the goal, winning. Oh, I did not realize this. I've just been looking down here, and I think we've lost a lot of men, because I think at our peak we had 950,000. Yeah, I think we've just lost 300,000 worth of battalions at this point, which is not great, but we still have plenty of manpower. It's just annoying because, you know, we have to retrain them. All right, I'm not sure if this is going to work. We've been in a bit of a stalemate. I'm going to see if I can just para drop into Paris. We'll see if the AI actually protects it. I don't think it'll be enough to capitulate, and I'm sure they're going to overwhelm us too quickly before we can capitulate them. But I think it's worth giving a shot because this is not going well. It's just a bloodbath. All right, let's see if any of them actually drop. Oh, here we go. Two have dropped right outside of Paris. I don't see anyone around here. Oh, we've lost air superiority, so we can't drop anymore. Oh, I don't think we're going to get it back. All right. Okay, Paris has fallen, but I don't know how long we'll hold on to it. And yeah, it's not going to be enough to capitulate France. I knew this would happen, but I think it was still worth a shot. If we could have gotten a couple more para drops, especially in maybe some of the other big cities, it could work. So we might try this again in a little bit. You know what? We are going to troll the French a little bit because I think we're going to lose all this, but we are going to dis dismantle uh, one of their factories and we are going to blow up their railroads just to, you know, harm them a little bit. I don't think it'll actually do anything, but hey, two less military factories is not gonna, you know, hurt us. All right, I think we're gonna try doing another para drop, but we're gonna just try para dropping in more cities and see if we can just cheese the French into a capitulation that way. Um, our ranks have been absolutely devastated. At one point, I think we were at a million. We're down to 430,000. Our battalions have been getting melted, so I'm working on training a bunch of people as fast as possible. But hopefully this para drop will work. We have air superiority at least for a little bit, so uh, let's give it a shot. Is this actually going to work? Are we just going to fully cheese the AI by para dropping them? We did it. That, I can't believe that actually worked. All you need, turns out you don't need, yeah, you don't even need normal divisions. All you need to beat the French are paratroop battalions. I genuinely cannot believe that worked. I figured, you know, the AI might put some stuff, you know, to protect their capital after I did it once. Nope, we just did it. Literally, what was this, like 10 battalions conquered all of France. That is, I'm very happy with that. Lots of equipment. Um, we still have this huge mess to clean up, but I can work with that. And the Italians are going to be a problem, but wow, this has just made our life so much easier. Oh, and I just realized I just established the Vichy French. That actually, um, they're not in the war, so I don't have to worry about the Italian border down there. Oh, this is amazing. Lots of troop management is going to be required because I need to like basically use ships and bring everyone over here and hope they don't die. But this is good, man. I actually cannot believe that worked. Uh, yeah, they're going to start pushing us from this side as well, but either way, just having them capitulate is just going to make, you know, they lost a bunch of guns, it's going to cause them issues, and hopefully we can flood people in from the other side. Not sure if it's going to last forever, but I'll take it. All right, the situation has developed to our favor. I was hoping this would happen. Italy has declared war on Yugoslavia, and Yugoslavia is allied with the Soviet Union, meaning that the Allies are now going to be at war with the Soviet Union. And more importantly, this is going to keep Italy preoccupied. Oh, I forgot that happens. Um, 
since they took Paris, Olavici has fallen to free France, which is not good. This is definitely suboptimal. Uh, we just need to clean it up, but I'm also trying to push into Italy. Um, hopefully all of this does not just collapse right now. Two seconds later. It's all sort of collapsing. It's like okay, but not okay, because if I can take out Italy, I think that's a trade I'm willing to make. Um, but yeah, things are going very poorly here. All right, I think what we're going to try to do is we're going to try doing the same thing that we did to France, but to Italy, where we just para-drop a bunch of boys and see if we can capitulate it. I see France fell, but minor details, minor details. Also, this is helping our breakthroughs in the north because they're being distracted and are being forced to pull troops off to the south to try to, like, fix these paratroopers. Wow, yeah, this has actually just broken the whole front for us. Oh, this is fantastic. I have a plan. It's a little bit silly, but I think it might just work. The plan is I'm going to try to para drop into the UK and then I have this entire army group of about 100 battalions and I'm going to just try to flood into the ports. Is this going to work? I'm not sure, but we're going to give it a shot because our manpower is getting depleted really quickly at this point. So, all right, I can't believe the first part of the plan worked. We had five paratroopers drop in and you know what's giving us air superiority? Two. We have two heavy fighters over the UK, and that's enough to get us our transfer plans. Now the question is, can our troops make it across the channel before they get, like, uh, torpedoed? And will they be able to capitulate the UK fast enough? Because if we take out the UK, that will help. I don't know if it'll win us the war, but it's not gonna hurt us. Alright, the first boys are about to land in the ports. I can't believe it. London has actually fallen just from five paratrooper battalions and then just flooding in soldiers. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold on to the UK, but we're just going to try to clean up the UK as fast as possible. And if not, we're just going to try to devastate them. All right, once again, Paris has fallen. So this is like the best position we've been in throughout the whole war. Paris is ours and London is ours. Uh, the border gore is absolutely horrific, but if we can pull this off, I am going to be so amazed. Oh, and it turns out we're not even that far away from Rome. Um... Things are not looking too bad. Manpower is an issue because um, the way I'm funding all of these offenses is by training 100 infantry battalions at a time. And we've also run out of guns at this point, which is not good. All right, um, the UK situation has gone poorly because all of the battalions have died from trying to attack them at this point. Uh, so I'm trying to just stabilize the line before we lose all of the UK. France, on the other hand, is, um, it's a big mess, but since we've already capitulated France and then they came back as France, it's much harder to capitulate them. But we are messing them up. Um, at what cost? Um, at the cost of every single young man in Germany, but that's a price I'm willing to pay. Oh my god, I can't believe it. The UK has actually capitulated. We have secured the island of Britain. This, I did not think this would happen. France is still fighting, causing us issues, but we've got Britain out of the war? Wow. All right, um... I'm worried that they're just going to instantly navally invade and take it back, but this is a huge win for us. If I can just, I'm going to keep the boys on UK to just defend it. Like, look at how few. This is it. And they're all battalions, remember? It's just these guys I managed to finally get them. And they're all, they're all these tiny, stupid battalions. I can't believe they actually did it. I honestly think, like, throughout this whole war, like, the purse, like, the AI that has fought the best and has been kind of carrying the allies is Belgium. I feel like I always see their troops, and we haven't been able to capitulate Belgium once. Like, France have capitulated, the UK have capitulated, but Belgium, not even close. Like, even Italy, we triggered the Civil War. Belgium, though, they're just, like, untamable. Not only that, like, we've capitulated the UK, we're doing this well against France. We have 200,000 soldiers right now. Like, our battalions, as soon as they go into battle, always get wiped. All right, fantastic news. Luxembourg has fallen. Now, this is a great win for the German army. What's crazy is even though it's 1941, this is all that we've managed to complete in the military doctrine of like the land doctrine. Just because I guess we don't get that much army XP because our battalions just die whenever they enter combat. Great news. Rome has fallen. London is ours and eventually Paris will be ours. I know we have no troops here, but the AI isn't doing too much. But soon we will collect all of the capitals. But yes, uh, this is going much better than expected. What's the army stat at? Uh, 337,000. How many men have we lost? A two and a half million men have died in their little battalions. All right, so the progress in the war, it's April 1942. We have secured all of Italy. France is still a mess, but we're doing a large push in the Benelux with 100 battalions. It seems to be going well for now, but anything can change because, as you can tell, they are melting quickly. There you go, already four battalions are gone. But if we can finally break through the Benelux, I think the war will most be won. Because France, we can always deal with France. We're, we're very well versed in bullying France at this point. 
Let's see, are we finally gonna take Brussels? I think we are. It's only taken like literally 50 battalions nothing. We've capitulated Belgium. That's actually such a glorious day. Uh, France is making a bit of a, a comeback. That's fine. We can clean them up just with just sheer numbers of battalions. It's all coming together. It is all coming together finally. <gasps> we did it. I can't actually believe it. I didn't think this would trigger because I thought like India or someone was a great power. We actually beat the allies. I was not expecting that with just battalions. Wow, that I genuinely didn't even think we were gonna finish the war there. I like I knew we were getting close to capitulating France. I didn't think that would finish the war. Wow. Okay, so it turns out it takes a quite a bit of time, a lot of micro, and quite a bit of suffering, but it is possible to beat the Allies with just battalions. There we go. We have defeated the Allies, and this is what the post-war world is looking like. Honestly, I really did not think we were going to succeed this. At one point, the French and the Belgians had started pushing me back. We needed to build forts along this line just to hold the line. But honestly, these paratroopers came in clutch. So many paratroopers lost their lives in terrible drops. But the ones that weren't terrible, they won us the war. So I think I'm going to call it a win here. However, if you guys are interested in a part 2 where we go after the Soviet Union, let me know in the comments. I'm not going to do it this video, but if there's enough support for it and if that's something you guys are interested, let me know and I'd be happy to make a part 2. We're probably going to need to reorganize the army a little bit and probably uh, bolster our forces, but I think we could probably take on the Soviet Union. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, dislike it. And if you loved it, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time.